Hey guys, thank you for joining me today. Let's pray. Father, I bless you. I invite you into this atmosphere, God. And I pray, Lord God, that you will just have your divine way, Lord God. Have your way in me. Have your way in my life. Have your way with everyone out there watching. Let your spirit endow me with power now, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that I will speak the words that you would have me speak in. That I will do what you have me do, Lord God. Let Rachel die and let the Holy Spirit within Rachel live, oh God. Lord God, I pray that you will just, through this word, change lives, heal hearts, restore spirits, restore souls, and renew spirits, oh God. I pray, Lord God, that you'll invigorate us all through this word. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hi, guys. Um, I've had a very interesting week this week. I've been watching Elevation's Youth X, which is their um, youth kind of... Um, thing that they have every year and this year um it was a hundred it it still is a hundred and sixty hours of non-stop content and they had all different kind of things they had uh, different kind of conversations like ice cream they were social, they had uh, different messages, uh, they had all kinds of different things. And as I sat back and watched this, I, I thought of, um, I thought of um, repairing the tear. And how I got this title, which was so strange, it was, um, it was, I think, on Wednesday when I was thinking of the sermons, um, this week's, um, sermon, and I was thinking of, um, you know, guys, I love music, and I'm a child of the boy band era, and I was an in-sinker growing up. I loved NSYNC, I had NSYNC posters, I was in NSYNC nuts, and I was re remembering um, the song, It's Tearing Up My Heart, and, uh, and for some reason it dropped in my spirit, 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 the Lord said, I need you to talk about repairing the tear. Um, and I said, repairing the tear, what does that mean? He said, it's twofold. He said, it's repairing the tear for a person individually, and it's repairing the tear for the youth. And so, today I'm going to talk about repairing the tear. Um, sometimes, when I say te tear, I mean repair, repair, repairing uh, the fracture um, between with us and another person, sometimes with us and God, sometimes with us and our uh, teenagers, and um, sometimes with us and, and our pastors, Sometimes with us and our friends, family members, it could be repairing the tear for anything. Uh, I was going to uh, call this sermon actually um, "Repairing the Tear of a Microwave Generation," um, uh, but the Lord said, "Delete that microwave generation part. I just want you to talk about." Uh, repairing the tear uh, in general. 
and there are so many terrors in our lives today, whether it be with our family, whether it be with our teenager, whether it be with our um, friends, co-workers, and whatever. Like, and the funny thing with tears is not always, but but most of the time, uh, tears start with little a little disagreement but if that little disagreement is not dealt with it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger until it becomes uh just a whole thing and it becomes out of control and people are not speaking to each other and people are not um they're just like mad at each other and it becomes a whole family feud and the thing with tears is it doesn't only affect you and the people directly involved if tears are not dealt with and repaired they can poison everyone around it like it detonates like a bomb have you ever been, like, in a family, um, at a family reunion, and you know cousin Keisha is not speaking to cousin Nina, and you, tr everybody tries to keep them apart, because they're both family and whatever, they're cousins, but, you know, when those two ladies meet, they talk about when you stole Tyrone and whatever, and the, it starts to poison the whole atmosphere. Everybody's day is ruined because these two ladies are just fighting, 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 and this was from 20 years ago, and Tyrone is married now to Evelyn. And he's not even in the lives anymore, but because she's so angry, the tear is still there. And it hasn't been repaired. And it hasn't been dealt with. And the thing with tears is that not only they start small, not only do they wreck everything in sight, but they harm the the people that um, are involved, and they prevent uh, people from really loving and really, um, really having active lives again. And those people may pretend that they're having active lives, but deep down, the tear, it, the fracture. And the relationship is so deep that they can't see their way out. So the Lord um, w wanted me to talk about uh, repairing the tear. And let me go back to Youth X for a second. A lot of uh, churches um, really don't know how to speak to their youth or whatever. And I'm not saying that every church can can do this or whatever. I know it takes a lot of, a lot of work. But at least um, where youth or pastors are concerned, at least put in the effort. And you say, what do we do? We can't keep up with that. But you know what you do? You just ask what they need or what they want or how you can repair the tear and yes you repair the tear with the message of the gospel of jesus christ and yes you repair the tear that way 
but practically um, you repair the tear with communication. That is the number one way to repair the tear. So if these two cousins that I was talking about, instead of getting angry at each other, really sat down and talked to each other nine times out of ten, that would um, alleviate some of the pressure or maybe solve all the problems. The problems uh, in most relationships is a lack of communication. The problems in, in most friendships are a lack of communication. The problems with most co-workers is a lack of communication. It's com communication is different than talking. Talking is just saying words. Communication is conveying a message which is then understood by by the other people involved. So talking is just saying words. Communication is conveying a message which is then understood by all parties involved. And if 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 the message I'm conveying is not understood by you you then cannot act upon it effectively. So a lot of people are talking. We're saying words, we're saying our opinions, we're speaking our minds, but we are not communicating. Messages are not being conveyed, which are then understood by all parties. So. I think the base, the main way to repair the tear is to communicate. And you're wondering, what, like, how can I communicate if they don't, um, if they, d they're not hearing me? What if they're so mad and, and they just can't hear, honey? You only can control yourself. If they don't want to hear, or they're not ready to hear, or they're not, they're ready to hear, but they're too defensive to receive, there's nothing you can do. All you can do is prepare your heart uh, to receive and forgive with them and that's where God's strategy comes into place because he will help you he will give you the strategy on how to communicate with this person maybe it's through a letter maybe it's you know um you know uh, sending them a message because we need to start repairing the tears. There are, there's too much fractured in this relate and relationships today, and that is really what's on God, God's heart. He wants to see us as human beings not only be in relationship with him and hear his voice, but he wants to see us standing together in unity. He wants to see us loving each other. He wants to see us forgiving each other. He wants to see us putting our arms around each other and just being there for each other. And uh, uh, he wants to see authenticity in relationships away from, away with the fake away with the fake 
the Lord really wants the authentic to live again. He really wants the authentic to live again. And not, um, not so that you tell everybody your business, but you need someone in your life or a couple people in your life that you can be authentic with. And sometimes it's not one person. Sometimes it's a couple. <clears throat> sometimes it's a couple people or a few people. And sometimes depending on your life, it's you go through seasons where this person comes into your life to offer support to offer counsel and then God ordains them out of your life and replaces that person with someone else who is more suited for what you need or sometimes he will give you a bunch of people at the same time uh, to talk to about different subjects. So it's not like it's not it's not like uh, you read the you read those books about four friends and they're um, they um, have the same friendships throughout their lives and they're with each other through everything. Yes, you do have friendships like that. I know people that have friendships like that. They've been friends for years, ups and downs and whatever. But sometimes, depending on what God has for you, He does not do that in your life. Sometimes uh, friendships go to ebbs and flows. Like you have seasons where this person is in your life. And then you have another season where he brings another person in your life for a season. And, you know, it ebbs and flows. And what he wants me to tell you is, um, he'll never leave you alone. He'll never leave you alone. And if he does, it will only be for a season. And you may feel like you're alone, but he wants to be, he wants to be your first best friend. When I was watching Youth X, um, Holly Furtick was talking about the time where she was um, lonely and, and the Lord and the Lord spoke to her and said, said, let me be your best friend. Well, he wants to be your best friend. And that's the first way to repair the tear. And he will give you the strategy to communicate um, the way that he wants you to communicate. And I think with communication, um, a lot of tears, a lot of fractures can be repaired. And not every fracture will be repaired. And when you, when you communicate, um, the message may not, may not, um, may not yield the result you want, but at least you can get it off your heart, you can get it off your chest, and the other person can then digest it and deal with it in their own way. And if it doesn't turn out um, that you can get that relationship back on the footing that it was before the tear happened, um, and there is healing that needs to be replaced. There's healing that needs to take place. Um, 
God will help you through that. But the first step, other than the relationship with him that I was talking about a few minutes ago, um, is communication with the other person. We don't, we don't really communicate with each other anymore, and I think we need to start communicating. Stop just talking and start communicating. Start conveying messages to other people. Start conveying messages that are understood by everyone involved so that person can take action by, because of what you said. Um, the Lord really wants us to start repairing the tears. There are too many fractures in families. There are too, there's too much uh, divisiveness with churches. There, there's too much going on, and he wants us really to repair the t tears. And the thing with tears um, is, um, like I said before, they happen slowly. And sometimes with tears, you don't know that they're happening when they're happening. Like it's just a little rip here or a little disagreement here or somebody said something here and there until the whole thing explodes. The Lord wants to put back together the tears. The Lord wants to put back together ter uh, t the tears. He wants to repair the 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 tears today and I I was just sent to uh, bring the message that the tear can be repaired the tear can be repaired the tear can be repaired but it will take work on to re on both part or whoever's in this situation and if you can't get everybody to to agree or sit down together without fighting at least let your um, part of the tariff be known and understood and communicated and if people don't want to receive it you can't make them receive it. All you can do is pray that God gives them an open heart, a heart of understanding, a heart of just um, a heart to be able to really uh, not just hear what you're saying, but listen to what you're saying. Um, there's a difference. Uh, Holly Bird had also said last night, there's a difference between hearing God and listening, listening to God. We all can hear God, but we're not always listening, or we're pretending that we're not listening. And a, another part of repairing the tear as well is really seeing what the other person has to say is really seeing beyond sorry really seeing beyond what they say to the heart of the matter because usually sometimes i shouldn't say usually sometimes what they're mad about is not sometimes the issue that they're mad about is not the real problem. Oftentimes, the problem is much deeper. So that your aunt um, 
could say, oh, I don't like your hair. And every time you see, you see her, she's like, oh my god, I don't like your top or whatever. And you could think that it's about you, she's an awful person. But it is really about her because she doesn't like herself and she sees a lot of you. No, she sees a lot of herself in you and you remind, remind her of her. So because she doesn't like herself, she puts that on you and understanding that you don't have to agree with her, but understanding breeds compassion and you can have compassion with her and then you can know the words, the right words to say without anger. Uh, Montel Williams, for my last point, Montel Williams used to always say, speak without offending, listen without defending, or listen without defending and speak without offending. Like so. When you're communicating, really listen. Don't just come up with your next word that you're going to say. Really hear the person. Ask God to open your ears to what the person is really trying to communicate with you. And ask God to let you see underneath what the person is really saying to what they're actually meaning to communicate. Um, when I was in college, um, I, before I got diagnosed with diabetes, I had, I was, um, eating a bagel in class and somebody said, oh, oh, somebody said, oh, you shouldn't be eating that. And I took major offense to that. Um, but... But the Lord said to me, they didn't mean to offend you. They meant, they meant that because of it being white bread, it may not be the best thing for you. They didn't mean to offend you like that. And I said, oh, and it caused me to, it still wasn't right, but it caused me to kind of, have a heart of compassion, like, well, maybe the person uh, struggled with their weight too and knew what it was like. Now, I didn't talk to the person. I don't, I didn't know wh what their uh, thing was, the reason why they said that to me, but that understanding gave me a heart of compassion. And that's what real communication does. Real communication gives p people a heart of compassion for one another and um, talking is just noise. Communication breeds understanding. And don't be afraid to ask clarifying questions or repeating, or repeat at what you think the person said, because that's a great way to to clarify. So, so you could say, uh, "Did you say blank?" And they could say, "No, I said this, and I meant this." So don't be afraid to ask clarifying questions. And repairing the tear 
also takes time. It didn't, most tears didn't happen overnight and it won't be repaired overnight. It takes time, it takes um, persistence, and it takes love. It takes love being conveyed, not just said. Repairing the tear takes love being conveyed and not just said. Uh, people can say they love you all they want, but if their actions don't line up with it, it's just talking. So don't just say you love the person. Convey it to them. Show it to them through through your actions, not only your words. And that will go a long way uh, t to, to repairing the tear. I hope you enjoyed the sermon. I really enjoyed uh, talking to you about this this morning. Um, if there's ever a subject you want me to address, feel free to message me or comment. I just, I just love hearing from you and um, I just want to know what's on your heart or if there's anything that I can help with. I don't know everything, but together we'll figure the answer to it and, and we are in this together. I'm learning just as much as you are learning, and I'm so happy that you've joined me today. Thanks. Bye.